today we're talking about how to find the queen bee. And the fact is you don't always have to find her. And a lot of people don't find her when they go and do their inspections. And that's okay, because actually the best thing to do is just to check for eggs. And once you see eggs, you know you have the queen uh, really recently, because an egg only stays an egg for three days. So when you see an egg or you see a bunch of eggs, you know uh, you have a queen as of at least three days ago. So usually I tell people just to look for eggs. But that being said, it's really useful to uh, search for the queen and be able to find her because there are going to be times when you need to find the queen. And um, it's always good to be able to show off and, and find her. I do always recommend that you get suited up when you're going to check your hive, especially as a beginner, because you are working with animals and you can't always predict their behavior. And then we've got our smoker going. You want to make sure you got a nice cool smoke coming out of there. It should look white. And if it's feeling too hot, um, just feel it with your bare hand. Put a little uh, grass or something green on top of there to cool it down. I like to do a puff just at the entrance before I get started. And then when I take the lid off, I like to do a puff just inside a little bit. I think of it as just letting them know that I'm coming in. And then I just learned this trick. <laughs> this is actually can be a handle. So if you take out the door, this right here is a handle for lifting, which is so much easier than what I was doing, <laughs> which was trying to lift from the bottom corners. And these flow supers get really heavy when there's honey in them. So it's nice to have a box set up like this where you can put your flow super on top. And I just use it on an off angle so I have the least amount of spaces touching. Uh, so that's less chances for bees to get crushed. If I were to line it up with the box, that's a lot of uh, surface area for bees to get crushed. So always just check, you know, anytime you're taking a piece of the hive off, just check to make sure the queen's not on there. So in this case, we're just checking the bottom of the queen excluder to make sure the queen isn't there. And anytime I take a piece off, I just do a little bit more smoke across the top to let them know. But actually, when you're, when you're looking for the queen, it's actually better to use less smoke. Sometimes when you use um, a lot of smoke, the queen kind of goes into, you know, hiding mode. So she'll kind of hide more um, if you've got a lot of smoke. So if your goal is to find the queen, laying off the smoke is kind of a good idea. So there's some stuff we can tell just by looking at the top of the frames here. Usually, the queen is going to be wherever you see the most bees on top of the frames. So if there's one frame that has, seems to have more bees on top of it, sometimes that's a clue that the queen is actually on that frame. But you can kind of see here, um, they're kind of, this is where the cluster is. This is probably where their brood nest is. And so typically, you know, in, in a brood box, that's gonna be in the middle, but every colony is different. So sometimes their brood nest is actually shifted to the side, one side or the other. Um, so just look at the bees themselves rather than assuming that it's always going to be in the middle. When I start um, with a hive inspection, I usually take a side frame out first so that I have room to work without worrying about crushing bees. Um, so we'll just pull out a side one, but typically she's going to be in the middle. So I, I wouldn't expect her to be on this frame, but I always look for her anyway. So usually the last frame is just honey. And I can see that there's a lot of empty cells on here. Some capped honey, a little bit of nectar, a little bit of pollen. So I wouldn't really expect her to be on here, but I'm giving it a good look anyway, just in case she is on here. So this is an example of like, yeah, you don't need to be able to find the queen, you know, doing a hive inspection, but if she was on this frame, and then I took it and I laid it down over there next to my, my super. What if she gets off and just goes up into the super? You know, so this is an example of, eh, if she's on here, I would treat this frame a little bit differently. And therefore it's good to be able to recognize the queen if you do happen to see her. So now we're getting into this kind of busy part of the hive and the chance of the queen being on one of these frames is a little bit better than on the end frame. But I'm seeing right away that this is almost all new nectar. 
And so I don't think she's on here. So I'm not going to look too carefully at this right now. One of the things you want to do is move kind of swiftly into the center of the brood nest because the longer you have the hive open, the more likely it is that the queen is going to go into hiding. So I don't know if you noticed, so I'm just, I'm just kind of glancing at one side quickly. And sometimes it helps if you look at it on kind of an angle like this. Um, so in this case, I'm turning it, I'm looking it downward because sometimes you get a better glimpse of that big fat queen bottom when, you, when you're looking on an angle like this. Some people do it that way. Um, this actually would be a good frame to find her on because I can see there's a lot of empty cells in the middle here and there's a lot of cells where she could be ready to lay eggs. And um, there's actually some fresh eggs in here. So this is a really likely place that the queen would be. She's usually gonna be where you see fresh eggs and where you see empty cells because that's where work needs to be done, where she has space to lay. I don't see her on there though. So we'll move on to the next one. So when you are uh, tilting your frame to try and look for the queen, uh, it's important to realize whether or not you're using foundation or not. So if you're using foundation, you can be uh, pretty crazy because it's attached on all four sides. It's a lot stronger, more stable. So you can kind of flip everything around. You don't have to worry about it. In this case, it's not attached at the bottom. I can actually see there's wire in it though. So it's pretty stable and it's darker, older, crustier comb. So it's a lot more stable. It's also kind of a cool day. So the wax is going to be more stable then as well. But just paying attention to how sturdy your, your comb is. And if it's not attached on all four sides, you got to be careful about how you flip it. So um, I'm always thinking about gravity when I'm flipping it. So it's okay to do something like this and look. It's okay to do something like this because I'm turning with gravity. But if I were to do this, if I were to do that, or if I were to go completely flat with it, that's not a good idea when you have foundationless, especially if it's new comb, especially if it's a warm day, because you're going to break the comb right out. Just learning to handle the comb properly is really important. <laughs> you, it would also be pretty terrible if the queen was on here and you flipped it like this and it fell and you smashed the queen. Just to make you all feel better, I've actually done that before <laughs> when I was a beginner. So <laughs> if it does happen to you, don't feel so bad, but hopefully you'll be able to avoid that. So again, I am seeing fresh eggs on this frame. So the queen's on here. And like I said, it's a, it's a frame that actually has a lot of open cells where she'll be able to lay eggs. She's coming up to the top here. She's got a red mark on her back. <laughs> queen looks different from the other bees. And she also moves differently. So first we'll talk about how she physically looks different. So she's got a long body. That's the first thing. And then she's got these short wings. Her wings are maybe the same size as the worker bees, but they only go halfway down her abdomen. And so that's a really nice trick. So if you happen to see a bee that you think might be the queen, check the wings. And if the wings go all the way to the end of the abdomen, it's not a queen. If the wings only go halfway, then it's, it's a good chance you're looking at the queen. Worker bees can be different sizes and queens can be different sizes. So sometimes you get kind of a small queen, like this is a kind of a small queen. She's actually not that much bigger than the worker bees, but her wings are still shorter. The other thing she has going on is she's got a bald back. In this case, she's got paint on her back. So that bald, black, shiny back is covered up with a dab of red paint. And a lot of beekeepers will mark their queens so that they're easier to find, but also so they know how old they are. So having a color mark on there, there's a system every year has a different color. So when they're marked, it's a little bit easier to find her, but I find that marking your queens sometimes makes you handicapped uh, because you're looking for the, the red mark, you're looking for that paint mark, and you're not learning what the queen actually looks like. So you're not actually learning to identify her. Uh, so I like to tell people, if you can, um, it's nice to have a not marked queen because then you actually have to learn how to identify her, what she actually looks like. So aside from the bald back, short wings, long body, she also has really long legs. Uh, and her legs are usually like splayed out. 
and they tend to be light in color. There's only a few breeds that actually have dark legs. So while worker bees almost always have dark legs, the queen, in contrast, usually has orange legs um, or kind of golden legs. So that's another thing to look for. And then also on her back legs, she will not have pollen baskets. So she won't have that little area that's designed to carry pollen because that's not something she does in the hive. Her one job is just to lay eggs. She moves differently. So you can see she is moving across the comb a lot faster than the other bees. She tends to move more quickly and she leaves kind of a wake behind her because the other bees are getting out of her way. And she'll leave this little wake behind her, this little trail of emptiness. Um, and you can see that as she progresses across the comb, she's leaving this kind of trail behind her. This queen really wants to go back in the hive, so I'm going to put her back in. Um, but yeah, so she's running. And uh, some people are able to identify the queen by just watching for that pattern, that running pattern. So when you're, when you're searching for the queen, another way to identify her is you're, you're looking on the frame for her and you can look for a change in the pattern. And so sometimes she has a wake behind her because she's moving faster. But another thing that happens is she has a group of bees that it's their job to take care of her. So they feed her, they clean her, and they follow her around. And those are her attendants. And so when she stands still on the frame, they often form a little circle around her. So sometimes when you have um, a queen that's just relaxing for a minute, you'll see this really nice circle of worker bees facing her. And it creates this kind of like, almost like a flower pattern on the frame where you've got the queen in the center and you've got all the bees lined up like petals around her. So just finding eggs is usually sufficient on any kind of given inspection. But there's times when you really do have to find the queen. And one of those most common times is when you have to requeen. So if your colony's not really doing well, maybe they're sick or maybe they're just not thriving, maybe the queen's laying drone eggs or not, not doing well, uh, you need to replace her. So that's called requeening. And what you have to do for the process of requeening is you have to go in, find your original queen and actually remove her before you can put in the queen that you've bought. And uh, if you don't do that, if you don't find your original queen and remove her, they will not accept the queen that you put in. So this is a really important step in the requeening process. And a lot of people really struggle with finding the queen. So they can't actually uh, locate her and then they're not able to requeen. So that's one of the most common times. You have to find her, get her out. Once you put in your new queen, uh, you wait a certain period of time. Usually the breeder will tell you how long. It's typically a week. Uh, after a week, you want to go in again and you actually have to find the queen again because you want to make sure the queen you put in was accepted. And you usually know this because she's got a paint mark on her back. Uh, so you can locate the queen. You see she's got the paint mark that you're expecting to see and you know, hey, that's the queen I put in. So another time when you would have to find the queen, you don't have to find her, but it's a good idea to be able to find her is when you want to make a split. So sometimes you're making a split for different reasons. And uh, beekeepers have different preferences about how they like to make splits. But it's really helpful if you know where the queen is when you're making the split, because then you can decide which half of the colony to put her in. So making a split is really splitting the colony in two, usually. And so you end up with two boxes, and you have half the bees in each box. And sometimes you want the queen in a certain box, and you want to be able to put your new queen in whatever box that she's not in. So if you're doing that kind of split where you've actually bought a new queen that you're putting in, you have to be certain that you're putting that new queen into the half that doesn't have your original queen in it. So that's another time when finding the queen is really important is making a split, but there are workarounds. So if you, if you aren't so good at finding the queen, there's, you can do a, what's called a walkaway split where you just split the hive in two. You don't care which half the queen is in, whichever half doesn't have her, um, they'll just make a new queen themselves from the eggs. And so there's ways to work around it, but it is usually helpful if you can find her while making a split. So another reason why you would have to find the queen, um, or another circumstance where I like to be able to find the queen, is if I happen to find swarm cells in my colony. So in the spring, the bees are wanting to swarm, and they're wanting to make new queens. And what they're doing is they start making these little swarm cups on the edges of the comb. And... Uh, if I see the cups, I'm pretty certain that my queen hasn't left yet. My original queen is going to leave with the swarm. If you want to do swarm control, if you're trying to stop them from swarming, seeing those cups is 
is a pretty early sign that they're thinking about swarming. So usually you can just remove the cups and not worry about it. But um, if you see these more advanced queen cells being drawn out, if they're a little bit longer, um, at that point it becomes a little ambiguous. You're not really sure if they've swarmed yet or not. So you're not always certain. And if they have already swarmed, um, and you go in and you destroy all those, all those swarm cells, then you've just rendered your colony uh, queenless. So uh, before I touch any of the, of the advanced queen cells, I like to be able to go through the hive and actually see my queen because I don't feel comfortable you know, removing all those cells if I'm not sure if they've swarmed or not. So that's another time when I really wanna be able to go through the colony and actually see my queen and find her. Another reason for finding the queen is actually when you're doing a bee rescue. So if you are catching a swarm or if you're doing a cutout where you actually have to remove the comb as well from you know, inside of a structure, um, you're, it's a good idea to be able to find the queen. And, and actually doing, doing bee removals and doing bee rescues is where I got really good at finding the queen because uh, I got a lot of practice uh, searching for the queens during those rescues. And the reason you want to find her is because you want to get her in your box. So the whole thing, the whole point of doing a rescue is that you're transferring the colony from wherever they are uh, into your, your bee box. And if you do not get the queen in there, a lot of times what happens is you can't really get the whole colony to go into your box. They keep going back out, joining the queen wherever she is, or they just get kind of confused and they're not really well organized and they won't kind of agree to go into the box. So if you can get your queen in there, uh, early on. It just makes the whole removal process, the whole rescue process a lot easier. So uh, that's another time when being able to identify the queen is a really useful thing. The other thing I like to do is after I've done a rescue, so after I've caught a swarm or after I've done a cutout, I wait a week and I let them get settled in the box. And then I like to be able to go in and find my actual queen that I rescued. And um, I especially want to do this if I'm not certain that I got the queen. So sometimes I do a rescue and I'm not really sure if I actually got the queen or not. I get most of the colony in there, but things happen during a rescue. Like you can um, accidentally crush the queen. She could get lost. So lots of things can go wrong during a rescue. So I always double check a week later to make sure that the colony is queen right, that they have a queen and that she's laying eggs. And I like to actually lay eyes on her uh, at that time. So that's another time when I really want to be able to find my queen. The last reason why you would like to be able to find the queen is if you're just having a little bit of fun. So like if you're having guests over and you've, you've suited them up and you're taking them into your apiary and you want to show them, you know, life inside the beehive, everyone wants to be able to see the queen. That's the fun part. So it's really nice to be able to go into your hive and to pull out the queen straight away and show everyone. 